Welcome guys. Today we're going to explain explain in Postgres. Get it? So, there is this command in Postgres that is called explain and it is used to retrieve information about what query plans Postgres will use for a given SQL statement. How about we jump into it? I have a beautiful table here. It has to be beautiful. If it's not beautiful, I send it back. Michael Scott. This table is called grades and there is an ID and there is a grade and there is a name. So it's like a bunch of students. There's a lot of rows here. I think over 200 million. And I showed many times how to create such table and insert this much volume of rows. So there is an index on the ID. There is an index on the G, the grade, but there's no index on the name of the students. So here's what we're going to do. So we're going to execute a bunch of queries and we're going to explain them and see what Postgres will do. So let's start with explaining the select star, the worst query you can ever do. When we do that, we get this beautiful one liner and let's explain, let's, let's demystify what's going on there. So the first part is usually the query plan. And this is called a sequential scan. And this is equivalent to a full table scan in other databases. Essentially what, what the database decided to do is like, okay, you're selecting everything and there is no filter. So I'm going to go directly to the table. I'm going to go directly to the heap and fetch everything. That's the sequential scan. Sometimes Postgres uh, do a parallel sequential scan with threading. They spin up multiple thread just to do the scanning. On grades, and here is the cost. And the cost is usually has two numbers, almost has two numbers separated by two dots. The first number and the second number. So let's explain what this means. The first number means how many milliseconds it took me to fetch the first page right? And in this case, it took zero. Why? Because Postgres immediately went to the table and fetched the first row and immediately got results. So it cost you almost nothing to get the first result. So if you're doing some sort of a limit, I right, select star from grades will limit one, you're going to get a result very, very quick. This number can increase the startup cost can increase if Postgres decide if the database decide to do some work before fetching, such as aggregating, such as order by, right? Things has nothing to do with actual fishing, work that precedes the actual things that you want to do. So that's you're going to see this number. If you see this number go up, that means you're doing a lot of stuff before fishing. And this number is essentially the total amount of time that it thinks. Because remember, it didn't really execute the query, right? It just tells you, hey, I think I'm going to do this. Right. And this is the total amount of time, which in, this is in milliseconds. So it, 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 it estimates that it's going to finish the whole thing in 289 seconds, essentially. And this is the, another estimation. This is very valuable, by the way, right? This is not an accurate number, but it gives you a quick number approximate based on its own statistics that this is the number of rows that it's going to fetch. That's why I always recommend when you want to do a count and you don't really care about the actual number, like you're doing, I don't know, you're building Instagram and you, you're counting the number of likes, use this. Don't, you, don't do select count. Select count will kill your performance. It's actually go and physically do the count on all your rows. And if you have billion rows, tough luck counting that stuff, right? That's why a lot of people use this. Explain, give me an estimate, return that. And there's the width, the width of the row. So this is the sum of all the bytes for all the columns. And I have three bytes. If you sum them, you got to get 31 because there is text there. All right, so that's the first one. Let's spice things up a little bit. Let's do an explain, select star from grades. And we're going to do an order by this time. We're going to order by G. And G is the grade. What do we do? What do we get? You see that this number bumped up a little bit. It's a, it's a 0.43 millisecond. So it, it did, Postgres did some work or it is attempting to do some work before fetching the row. And that work is what is actually doing the sort or the by G. And it's not so bad because it did use the index that is on G to do the sorting. And guess what? The index is already sorted. So the work is very, very trivial. Right? But it is work, none of the less. And that's the total number of things. The rows in this time, this is almost the same number. It should be, better be. <laughs> and then the, the width is also the same. 
Okay. Now let's spice things a little bit and do explain select star from grades order by name, something that has no index. And you can see <laughs> that is a little bit of work. Is that the, 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 in this case, Postgres says, ooh, you want me to sort by the name? The name is a column that is not indexed. So I have to go to the heap. And guess what? I'm going to pull everything to in order to sort it. So it started to, first of all, it did a parallel sequence scan. Always read it from bottom going up, right? This is how we do it. Don't read it from up. To, um, it starts from the inner thing going up, 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 up. Okay. So the parallel sequential scan on grades, it took nothing to do that because, hey, I'm going directly to the table, right? Cost nothing to go there. Again, we didn't sort yet. Uh, this is how much time we're going to take. So it's estimating that it's going to take me 200 seconds, 218 seconds. And this is the number of rows that we're going to get back. 31. Got it. All right. Now we're going to sort on the name. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Look how much it took just to get to the point of which something. The sorting took, man, that's a lot. That's that's a thousand seconds. Yikesy, right? So you can see that this number is very critical. The first number. The second number is not, not so much. That's the last one, right? But the first number is everything that you need. And then obviously we plan two workers. So there's two parallel doing this thing. And since we had two threads, two processes doing the work, <laughs> we got to merge the result at the end of the day, right? And that's the total results. Obviously, we get this number and uh, that's the final result and 31 width. So you see that there is more work that need to happen to get to get to the actual thing. All right, let's play a little bit with the other stuff, guys. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to do explain select ID, not just the whole thing, just the ID from grades. Let's just try this thing. What do we get? Obviously, we get zero cost costs nothing to go to the table. Well, it costs nothing to go to the table to fetch the first page. That's almost nothing. Zero, right? And the rows. But look at this. Look at the width. We get four. Why four? Four bytes is the result. You're asking to return only the ID. And the ID by default is an integer. And the integer is four bytes. By the way, careful. <laughs> Don't put your primary key as as just integer if you're expecting this lower table to grow beyond two billion. Right? That's what happened to Parlor, by the way. <laughs> they grow be beyond two billion notification and then blew up their table. Right. Yeah, so there are four bytes in the ID. Okay, let's do explain select name from grades. You can see that. The I, the average row size is 19 because the name is a, is text, right? And depends on the name of the students, can go 19. They took the average and say, hey, we are expecting this going to be 19. But so be careful with this number, uh, especially if you're returning this across the wire to your backend application, right? The larger this number, the larger the network you're going to take, the, the higher the TCP packets, right? I mean, don't put like a blob and do select star when you don't use this thing. That's why it's insulting to do a select star to the database. Only to pick one row or one column from those, right? Only select what you need. And you can see if I do, for example, the G, it's eight. That's the that's a number of bytes in the double value. All right, let's do an how was how is indexing working in the in Postgres? Select star from grades where ID equal ten. So there's an obviously there is a unique index on the ID here. So we're expecting this to be fast. Obviously, we scanned the index and we jumped to fetch. We jumped to the heap to fetch some row value and it took us 0.43 seconds. And the total time to talk uh, took the whole thing is eight milliseconds. Again, this is not actual times. There is another command that we're going to explain in another lesson or video where we're going to show analyze that's the actual time token this is this is just an estimation so we did an index scan and we used the index condition like this one in this case and uh, you can see if we played with this a little bit and say okay this is a silly query but 
bear with me here so now when i do explain select id from grades where id equal 10 silly query of course because the ID, you just said id equal 10 but you can see that now we're getting an index only scan which is a faster one right that the work we didn't even need to jump to the heap to do the work right so that's just another type of query i i did i did, I did many videos talking about that as well all right guys that was a quick video explaining explain and uh, this was a very very basics of the basics of the stuff right maybe i'm gonna make a few or more lessons and more videos to explain the analyze explain the buffers explain the shared hits and other stuff as well let's let's keep this video short and sweet gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome goodbye